everybody, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and today I'll be building an anti-aliased sawtooth and square wave oscillator in Reactor. And this is a algorithm that I just discovered today, so I'm not that familiar with it, but it seems to look work pretty well. And the basic idea is to use a sine wave and a tan H wave shaper to kind of shape the sine sound into a square wave. So first thing I'll do is to create the basic sine wave flowing into a tan H shaper. And uh, unfortunately, we don't have access to the tanh function in um, primary, so we have to jump into core for a second. It's going to be really simple. Just add an input and an output to our audio core cell, and then go into the expert macro math trig operations section to find the tanh operator, and simply connect it like so. And this is a kind of basic function, but unfortunately it's just not a part of primary for some reason. Okay, so next we want to supply the amplitude input of the sine wave with a value. And this is the kind of the interesting part of this particular algorithm. We're going to use a core cell once again because we need to have access to uh, some functions that just don't exist in primary once again. And we're going to have two inputs to our core cell. And the top input is going to be the frequency of our current waveform. And the bottom ha uh, input is going to be the uh, sample rate of your ensemble. So to get the sampling rate, we'll use a system info module, which you can find in the auxiliary menu. So the next thing we're going to do is just to implement a little bit of math to calculate the amplitude of our sine wave. Now don't be intimidated by the math. I have not that much of an idea why the particular values that are used are used. I just have read enough to know that it works. So the first thing we're going to do is get the uh, one half of the Nyquist limit, which is equal to one quarter of the sample rate. So we'll just multiply the sample rate by 0.25. And then we're going to multiply the incoming frequency by the log 10 of the incoming frequency. And then we can divide the uh, quarter of the sampling rate over the value we've calculated with our frequency. And finally, we'll take that whole value and multiply it by half of pi, which is equal to uh, about 1.5707. And this will give us an amplitude for our sine wave. And basically what's happening here is we're going to boost the amplitude of the sine wave really, really high, um, especially at lower frequencies. And in turn, when the sine wave gets sent to the tan h function, the tan h function will output values that are equal to either negative 1 or 1 outside of a small range. So for the most part, we'll get values equal to negative 1 or 1 with a short transition period between them, which will give us kind of our square wave shape. <coughs> Okay, so the next thing I want to do is just to build a really simple scope so we can look at the shape of our waveform. So I'm going to build a scope out of an XY module that will show us uh, exactly one period of the waveform so we can get a really good idea of what shape we're making. 
So we can simply use a ramp oscillator taking the frequency of our waveform and with an amplitude of 1 and supply the x input of the xy module with that. The y input is supplied by the waveform itself. And then we can simply uh, set the uh, negative value of the y to negative 1 in properties. So we can look at the whole waveform. I'll uh, get rid of the cursor, change the style to scope, and we're ready to use our oscilloscope. It looks like a mess right now, but I'm sure that'll be sick fixed soon. There we go. Alright, so as you can see, we're getting a kind of a pure sawtooth, or square wave shape right now. I'm just going to change the range slightly so we can look at the whole waveform. And you can see as the frequency gets higher, the wave shape becomes more of a sine wave type shape. And that's happening because the amplitude that we're supplying to our sine wave is uh, decreasing. And if we go really low with our frequency, the amplitude of our sine wave is going to get higher and higher. And eventually you can see we uh, start getting some problems with our oscillator, especially in the FFT spectrum. And that happens, I've noticed it happening mostly when um, the amplitude of our sine wave is higher than uh, 28 or so. So what I'm going to do is just create a little limiter here so that the value coming out of our amplitude macro never gets higher than 28. So to do that, I'm going to use a combination of the compare and router modules in core. And we'll simply compare the output to 28. And if it's larger than 28, then we'll just set it back down to 28. And if it's less than 28, we'll simply pass it through to the end. So this is a very similar structure to something you might build in primary uh, using a separator module in conjunction with a value and a merge module and as you'll see in a minute the basic structure is almost identical in core. So I've already added the bottom output of the router module to be connected to the merge which just is sending our value on its way and now I'm using a latch to set anything higher than 28 back down to 28 and we can use the output of the merge module to finish off our macro. Now if we go really low you can see that our wave shape is still maintained. Okay, so one of the really cool things about this oscillator design is that we can multiply the amplitude supplied to the sine oscillator uh, by a knob from 0 to 1. And that knob will essentially then work as a low-pass filter in that it, the lower the knob, the less frequencies will be created by our oscillator. So I'll just name that bright. And we can run it directly into the amplitude of the sine wave. And let's finally uh, connect the oscillator to the output of the ensemble. And first I'm just going to send it through a simple AR envelope so it doesn't create clicks when it's uh, turned on and off. And we'll just give that a gate and we'll just leave the uh, attack and release times equal to zero just for demonstration purposes. Alright, let's take a listen.
right, so you may want to add an audio smoother after the knob before the amplitude of the sine oscillator. I'm a little strapped for space and time right now, so I'll just skip that step, but uh, something you might want to do in the future. Next thing I want to do is show how we can turn this wave into a sawtooth. And I'm going to create a cosine oscillator first, which we're going to use the ramp oscillator feeding a cosine module like so. And we can simply multiply the output of our cosine with the output of the square oscillator that we already made, and we'll get a sawtooth at twice the frequency of the original waveform is as far as I can tell anyway. So looking at the spectrum of our waveform, we see that there's always a lot at the zero mark here, no matter what note's being played. And that's basically DC energy that's being caused by the ring modulation that we're performing when multiplying our two oscillators together. So I'm just going to use a DC trap. And this is a module I created for part of another tutorial back at reactortutorials.com. So you can find it there. And simply send the output through the trap and it will remove all of the energy at the zero frequency Alright, if you like this tutorial, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, and have a good week.